did last year, do you kind of brush that under the rug or do you use that as motivation? It's it's an interesting question um, because you're proud of where the team got to, but there is a pit in your stomach, um, and and it's real. And I, I think it you can do one of two things: you can um, sit and, and think about the what ifs, or you can have it motivate you and drive you. And uh, I do believe that uh, I know it's motivated me, and and I believe the players feel the same way. Um, a little bit of. Um, sour taste in your mouth and looking forward to getting back and um, have another crack at it. So going off of that, um, how would you say, you know, the off season went and bringing in some new players and, and what do you think of, of your team heading into this season? Number one, the, the returners are in great shape. And, you know, going in a, in, in talking about last year a little bit and uh, we probably won't talk about it much going forward, but uh, to the to the point is that I don't think anybody knew the level of fitness required to play the way we wanted to play. I think they thought they did, and then the year started. And, um, you know, it probably took us ten games to get them where we wanted to get them. You know, that's not the case this year. Um, the The majority of our scoring is returning. Um, those guys have really prepared this summer, really worked, and, um, and and they're in phenomenal shape. And I think that the younger players and the new players have come in, and and they thought the same thing. They thought they were in shape until they see the guys that are actually in shape and the way that they can move and skate. Um, and, and they're doing as, as much as they can to catch up. But, um, you know, I like our freshman class. Uh, they're going to be big contributors, uh, especially up front. You know, they're going to play minutes on the power play and penalty kill. And, um, you know, there's, there's still going to be days that they're going to look like freshmen, um, but more often than not to look at the guys we recruited. And, and that's what's encouraging. So now that you guys are, you know, it's, it's game week, so what's the mood been like? How are you guys preparing? What's, what's this week going to be like for you guys? Well, you know, this year with the change in the rules, we were, we were allowed more time with the guys, uh, so we got an extra two hours a week. And uh, it's a long time to practice without playing a game. So early the guys were a little irritated with me because they wanted to get on the rink, uh, but I didn't want to get to the point where we got to this week and we were stale. So I want to get to the point where they're hungry now. Uh, and, you know, we talked about it yesterday about, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel now. And, and I think, you know, we're just going to get through uh, two more good days of preparation. And I think all of us, including me, are really excited to get on the bus and, you know, get back to some normalcy of why we're here. What do you expect out of state this weekend? <clears throat> Their top line's legit. Um, you know, that we talk about us having a legitimate first line, they have a legitimate first line. So we're going to have to really pay attention to them. Uh, they have a freshman defenseman that um, was an NHL draft pick last year. He had 71 points in junior hockey. I think he's going to add to their element and their power play. Uh, and they're returning their whole first power play. So th there's going to be some high end that we're going to have to pay attention to. Uh, they have a freshman goalie that I would assume we would see one of the games this weekend, if not both. Um, it had a great year in the USHL. Um, they're returning a guy that um, that played very well for him in the net. You know, it probably didn't get as much run support as he hoped, but um, you know, they they're a hard nosed, well coached hockey team. You know, I, I think sometimes you think of uh, Big Ten schools, and maybe you think it's it's run and gun and and high risk hockey. And uh, Michigan State's very hard nosed. They're very responsible. Uh, they don't give you anything up. You know they're not gonna they're not gonna beat themselves. So, you know if, if our structure is not where it needs to be, um, you know we could be in trouble because they are gonna have guys back, and you know you're gonna have to work and work and work and work to break them down, and you know that'll be the challenge for us. Can we can we break that structure and that team down? Oh, sorry. Um, you chose Denver Pierce as your captain this year. So, what kind of leadership does he? Bring your team. Denver is probably the poster child for what we hope to be. Um, you know, he's a, he's a farmer, you know, and, and he works long hours in the summer. And we talk about having blue collar skill on our team. And um, you know, Denver is obviously talented because you, you, you hear a lot about Rockwood and Loggins. But you know, until they got Denver, um, you know, they were good players in the league. And, and, and with the addition of Denver, they became uh, elite players in the league. Um, and and that's that's one part of the skill element, but he, he has a blue collar part too. He's mature, um, he works, 
He's probably the toughest player I've ever coached. So he, he's exactly what, you know, we want for the face of our team. He's a great student. Um, you know, he's, he's just a, he's a phenomenal um, leader, and we're lucky to have uh, that type of guy. You know, and, and we do have great leadership in, in Rockwood and Baloo. And, on, you know, I, I think on any other team, you know, you'd have some other seniors that would be captains. But because of how strong our, um, our, the three guys that were chosen as captain are, um, you know, those guys will just be in, in different leadership roles. I think it's kind of appropriate that Denver is from the UP and he's a captain of a UP team. I love it. <laughs> I, I, like, I love it. Um, I want to recruit UP kids. I want to have UP kids. Uh, there's something about, you know, having pride from where you're from, you know, and um, I think in, in UP games, um, you know, those guys rise to the occasion. I think in, um, in games like this this weekend where, you know, we're, we're kind of up here and the rest of the state's down here, you know, we want to show what, what we have too. We want to show a little UP hockey. And, um, you know, Denver's obviously a great, uh, great representation of that in our program. Go ahead. I see there's a couple transfers this season, uh, Bretzman and Newhouse. What can mm -hmm. you say about that? Um, well, Ben Newhouse is, uh, has to sit out this year because uh, he's uh, he, he transferred and, and there is a, a rule you have to sit out. Tony Bretzman's a graduate of Notre Dame, so he can um, do the graduate transfer exemption. Um, you know, he's a guy. Tony's a guy who's who's uh, was a, a scoring defenseman in junior hockey, um, and he's been at a program where uh, they're probably as as good of coaches in the in the structure element of the game as anybody, and. Uh, in the teaching side of the game so uh, he's really been coached um, he, he's you know we play a different style than they do so we're, we're kind of working the kinks out there a little bit um, but you know I, I I've talked to Tony and I've reminded him that you know early in the year it took Adam Rockwood a little bit of time to to kind of get his motor going you know and Tony didn't play all last year so they preserved his eligibility so he could play this year so it's kind of like you sat out but you just sat out at the school you were at so uh, Tony's, I, I believe, is, is going to just get better and better and better each weekend. He's, he's a responsible kid, mature kid, and, and he wants to be a hockey player, and, and that's why he came here. It was last year. Uh, I don't know what that end result is, um, but, you know, in terms of, of goals, you know, I think the, the number one goal of, of every program in, in college hockey is to try to be one of those 16 teams that, that makes a tournament. And, and we were very close last year, but... Um, you know, close doesn't cut it. And, uh, you know, I think there's a little more emphasis on our non-conference opponents this year, you know, putting us hopefully in a position where, um, you know, you can have a little bit of cushion that, you know, we didn't maybe have that cushion last year. We, you know, we had a 10-game winning streak and, um, you know, didn't move much. And then, you know, if you, if you end up, you know, losing a game, which is going to happen, um, you know, and in, in you have cushion from your non-conference opponents, that doesn't affect you as much. So um, I think right now the focus is on starting the year strong. You know, we have a, a blue blood of college hockey. You can get a false sense of where your team is. You know, like the, you look at some of the scores. You know, I think um, uh, Alaska Fairbanks beat somebody 12-1, to 1, and then they had a hard time scoring their first week and they didn't get a goal. So um, that's the danger of playing those games, you know, and, and the danger of injury. Uh, what we did is we played an inter-squad game and, you know, we got video from it and we, we cut it like it was a real game and we showed it to our guys yesterday and I think it had the same effect and the same result. And maybe you can get double video out of it because you can coach both the green and the gold team on the, on the video. And I think the guys were surprised on maybe some of the habits that, um, you know, that still need to get shaken out of us, you know, and, and so I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with the way that went. You know, and I think it's a, it's a renewed sense of focus after seeing where you are. Again, sometimes you have a false sense of how good practice is going, but, you know, games are different, and you get different things happen in games and um, different scenarios. So uh, I think that was going to be helpful for us, you know, but it's, you know, you're kind of darned if you do and darned if you don't.